Hi, my name is Rennie Curran. I'm a former professional athlete, keynote speaker, author, and the CEO of Game Changer Coaching. Throughout my days as an athlete, I had the amazing opportunity to play at the University of Georgia as a linebacker, and my recruiting experience was full of tons of ups and downs, but through that experience, I got to meet an amazing man who would eventually become my coach, and this is who I have the opportunity to interview today, none other than my coach, uh, the former head coach of University of Georgia, Coach Mark Richt, uh, an amazing man who I just cannot say enough good things about, someone who took lots of young boys like myself and turned us into God-fearing men of character uh, who are now leaders. And so it is my honor to just bring on none other than once again, my former head coach, Mark Richt. Coach, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, Rennie. How are you? You look good. Oh, man, you look even better, man. Good to see you. <laughs> yes, sir. That's good. Yeah, life, life is good, baby. Life is good. Awesome, man. It's such an honor to have you on and just to talk to you every time we connect, man. It's always a pleasure. And uh, I'm just excited to, to see all the great things that you're doing, man, since we've been together at University of Georgia. Yeah, it's been fun. You know, we had the three-year stint at Miami and then obviously uh, retired from coaching and became an author, wrote a little book that just came out, you know, make the call. That's That's been going great. And uh, been on the ACC network. Uh, as a studio analyst and uh, work with a bunch of guys about your age. But, uh, <laughs> I've been a lot of fun to work with. And, uh, you know, we're trying to educate people and entertain them. And, yeah. and I still get to keep my toe in the water when it comes to football. So it's been fun. Now, I love it, Coach. And, I mean, when you talk about your career as a coach, so many people talk about your days at University of Georgia, then Miami, and the things that you're doing now. And for the guys like me, who you coach and who you impacted, man. We all knew you as a man of character and a man of faith. And um, first question I have for you, man, is how did your faith really influence your career as a coach, both on and off the field? Right. Well, Rennie, I think everybody's got a belief system. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody makes decisions based on what they believe. Mm. And, uh, you know, I believe uh, Jesus is Messiah. I believe that, you know, God's word is inerrant, I believe you know, what, what God's word has to say. So when it came to making decisions, my, my goal was to try to make a decision that God would be pleased with. And uh, I kind of, I felt like if I had a lot of time to make a decision, I could, I could pray on it and, and try to hear from what God had to say. And whenever I had peace about a decision, I'd make it. And, mm. But sometimes you got to make a decision fast. And... Um, and when that happens, hopefully I'm in the right state of mind and, 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 you know, prayed up to the point where when I make quick decisions, there are also good ones. And the other thing I'd like to mention is sometimes you make a decision and you put your head on the pillow that night <laughs> and you realize it wasn't very good. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you got to make a decision and live it out for a day or two. And all of a sudden you realize that wasn't such a good idea. And, and I think you have to be humble enough to, Admit that you made a mistake. Mm. And if you could change the decision, change it. If it's too late to change it, I think it's still worthy of, you know, owning it and, and apologizing for it and moving forward in a positive way. Yeah, no, I love that, Coach. You, you mentioned so many powerful things, just having that belief system, having the humility. I mean, so many powerful things that I, you're not just talking and I saw you live it firsthand. And uh, that's why I'm so excited to hear that you've written your book um, make the call. And what I want to know is, you know, what inspires you to, to write the book? Because you're doing so many things right, there, right now. You're commentating right. and, you know, you're, you're staying busy speaking. So what inspired you to write right. the book? Well, somehow I got inspired to write the book while I was at Georgia. I started out, uh, I, I was pretty, pretty stupid to think I could write a book while I was the head coach of Georgia. <laughs> I tried to squeeze it in one off season. And by the time we started critiquing Chapter one, two days was started. I'm like, forget this. <laughs> so I just, I, I put it aside and said, there's no way I could do it while I'm coaching. Then I retired from coaching in Miami and my literary agent said, hey, let's write the book. I said, ah, I don't know if I'm ready or not. I'll think about it. Well, in the meantime, I have my heart attack. Oh, hey. And then uh, after that thing, I'm like, if I'm going to write a book, I better write it pretty quick. Hey. <laughs> you never know. You never know what yeah. tomorrow 
will bring. So, uh, but you know, the book, it's, it's titled make the call, as you mentioned, and, uh, it's kind of a play on words uh, yeah. as a coach. If you're calling plays, you call, you call, you make the call every 40 seconds. If you might make the call in recruiting or yeah. in dis in discipline or whatever it may be. So, you know, obviously you're making a lot of calls and, and that just means you're making a lot of decisions and we all make decisions in life. So this book is, it's kind of a behind the scenes look at some of the decisions I made yeah. football wise, family wise, faith wise, and uh, ultimately, it'll it'll challenge the reader to make the most important call that they could possibly make. So mm. it'll, it'll be fun for anybody who's a football fan. But I think uh, anybody who's got to make tough decisions in life, which is all of us, will enjoy the book. Yeah, and no, I love it. I'm definitely excited. And speaking of making the call, you know, the, there are so many people that I'm sure made – an impact on you in terms of making those those decisions, and I know that one of those people uh, was the recent um, coach Bobby Bowden, who passed away recently. And uh, you know, I know he had such an amazing impact and influence on your career. So, can you just talk about some of the ways that he helped you when it right. came to making the call? Well, you know, Rennie, he hired me as a graduate assistant coach in 1985. I was 20, 24, 25 years old. Wow. And uh, he allowed me to coach quarterbacks as a, with, along with him. But basically, he went to the first quarterback meeting with me. He, he kind of followed me around practice a little bit, and then he never came back. <laughs> and uh, he trusted me enough to coach quarterbacks at a Power 5 school wow. you know, as a young man. And uh, so he helped me in my career, obviously. But the thing that he really helped me with is – my spiritual life in that, uh, unfortunately, a player at Florida State was shot and killed at a party mm. during an open week. And the next day, there was a team meeting. And long story short, the young man's name was Pablo. He said, Man, I don't know where Pablo is right now. I don't know where he'll spend eternity mm. uh, because uh, I don't know where he was in his faith. And then he kind of preached the gospel and he said, he said, man, Pablo used to sit in that chair right there, and now he's gone. He said, if that was you last night, instead of Pablo, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Mm. And uh, he was talking to the players, but it, it, you know, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me through Coach Bowden. And uh, so I went to his office the next day and knocked on the door, and he said, come on in, buddy. He calls you buddy when you forget your name sometimes. <laughs> but, and uh, I said, Coach, I know you were talking to those players, but... I need, I need Jesus, and uh, I prayed to receive Christ right there. So I own a lot having to do with my career and, and, and temporal things, but I really own for, you know, my eternal destiny that he was bold enough to preach Christ that day after that, during that meeting. Yeah, no, I love it, Coach. And, I mean, that's such a, a powerful call that he made and, and a call that you responded to, man. And uh, besides that moment, what were some of the greatest uh, calls that you made, uh, both on and off the field? Uh, off the field, the best call I made besides choosing Christ was choosing my wife, Catherine, <laughs> the, the water girl. That's a good uh, one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're 34 years into it, and wow. uh, it's been a wonderful marriage. And uh, I can say this to everybody out there, I highly recommend – being madly in love with your wife when uh, the empty nesting days come. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were, we were actually, we spent COVID at the beach, just me and her. And uh, we mm. kind of felt guilty because we were having a great time. Uh, <laughs> I know a lot of people struggled during COVID and we don't want to minimize that, but you know, it's one of the better times of our marriage where it was just us and I'd retired and, from coaching and really wasn't doing a whole lot at that time, just trying to catch my breath. And we had a wonderful time together, but that was one of the better off the field decisions on the field. So many uh, good and bad ones, but um, one of the more fun ones and kind of a defining moment for me as a coach was year one when we beat Tennessee at Tennessee and that, that old hobnail boot. Yeah. Uh, uh, game where you know with just a couple seconds on the clock we threw a 
ball to the fullback down the middle, Veron Haynes. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, won the game against a, a great football team, a team that actually would have played for the national championship if they had beat LSU in the SEC championship game that year. So it was a great Tennessee team at Tennessee. It was my first game as head coach uh, at, a, at in an SEC venue besides our own. And so it was kind of a defining moment as a play, defining moment as a victory. And it also uh, kind of um, – galvanized the phrase finish the drill because in the locker room after the game we were uh talking about you know everybody was just celebrating having a good time and, and i calmed everybody down finally and started to talk about what had happened and one of the guys stood up and said coach we finished the drill because hmm. you know how mad drills are already oh yeah <laughs> there, there, there's a finish you know that off-season conditioning was so tough yeah. on everybody and they wondered if it was worth it but after that game when we came back like we did they're like coach we finished the drill I said that's right we finished the drill and it means it means you know can you finish a drill stronger than you started but it also means it, it just means never never quit no matter how bad things get so it uh it's a very special day yeah I, I love it coach and you mentioned so many great things there I'm actually working on uh, hopefully getting to where you are one day as far as being married and making the right call there. And so I'm definitely going to be calling you for some advice. And then, I mean, I, I was there when you made so many great calls just on the field, man, and, and so many great moments in, in my freshman year. I can remember back to the blackout game in Auburn and oh, yeah. the Florida game. I mean, all those <laughs> amazing uh, moments <laughs> and, and celebrations and, and all that good stuff. But you know, just going back to that concept of, of making the call, you know, both on and off the field, how can those, whether it's, it's the readers or just people in general, how can they apply the concept of making the call to their lives? Well, again, I, I think that um, everybody has a belief system. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes decisions, decisions based on what they believe. And uh, because of that, I, I think it can help guide you because a lot of times when you make a decision, I mean, every time you make a decision, not everybody's going to be happy with it. Somebody will and somebody won't. And sometimes we try to measure, who do I want to please with this, this decision? Mm. And, uh, and so sometimes we make a decision based on what would be popular rather than what would be right. And so, you know, if you got your belief system in the right place, and for me personally, you know, trying to please God with what I did, then that's how I knew, you know, what was right in my in my mind, or, you know, for me to decide on on any particular subject. So, by by doing that, I didn't worry so much about pleasing people. I worried about pleasing God. Mm. Love it, Coach. Well, man, I'm so excited to read your book, and I, I really, really appreciate everything that you shared today. And the last question I have is just, how can people get information about? Uh, your, your book, Make the Call, and uh, be able to get in touch with you. Right. Well, Make the Call is, like they say, wherever books are sold. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, you go to Amazon and get on their book thing and just type in Make the Call, Mark Richt, and it'll come up. There's a website that's called makethecallbook.com. You can get it there, too. So uh, there'll be some good information on that. And then, of course, I got my Twitter. I don't even know what my Twitter handle is, but... <laughs> Probably had Mark Rick. <laughs> Pretty simple, but uh, anyway, just uh, I th I'd say this: uh, anybody who loves football and family and faith will love the book. So it's it's not just for guys that just love ball. It's it's for everybody. Awesome, Coach Man. Well, for me personally, Coach, I just want to say, man, thank you for everything that you did for guys like myself, a, a young kid of uh, Liberian immigrants who was just hoping and dreaming to one day play at University of Georgia for you just giving me that opportunity. And not just for that, man, for so much impact that you had on myself and so many guys that I played with, man. You're forever yeah. going to be my coach, man. I love you, and uh, just yeah. thank you for everything. I love you too, Randy, and I want to tell you thank you for, you know, who you are. You got raised right for sure. <laughs> and you, uh, you, you brought an energy and integrity to the game that, uh, that was, you know, very much uh, – uh, loved by me and my wife and our coaching staff and our fan base and your teammates. You know, you did, a, you did an awesome job. I'm proud of you. 
Appreciate it, man. It, it was all and those. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the man you've become, too. It's, it's very evident. Appreciate it, doing man. Doing great things. It was, it was a lot of discipline runs and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get you straight once in a while. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll never forget the stadium runs, man. Those are good times. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Oh, man. But, nah, it's, it's been an honor to interview you, Coach. And, uh, yeah, I wish you continued success. And I know I'm going to see you soon.